red car then. The beach is filling up nicely with people uh, enjoying the sunshine. We've got uh, Factor 15 on today. Uh, you've obviously got to watch the sun strength as we uh, approach midday today. Uh, yeah, OK, the sea looks lovely. Sadly, though, with the increased use of the beach comes the potential for more people getting into trouble on the water. Last weekend, the RNLI, which are based here in Redcar, were called out on several occasions to rescue people. One child was swept out to sea in an inflatable toy dinghy. Joining me on the seafront, Dave Cox from the RNLI. Dave, good morning to you. Good morning. That sea today looks almost inviting in terms of going for a paddle, but... Is it necessarily as safe as it looks? It's not always as safe as it looks. Um, it, it is a wonderful day today, but um, you've always got to be aware of things like the tide coming in and out. The currents uh, in the sea itself can be quite treacherous, and the wind itself can also cause a lot of problems. Uh, just a slight breeze if you're in an inflatable before you know it, you're going to be well out to sea in it. Now, we tend to associate the work of the RNLI with bad weather, but the busier the beach becomes in good weather, the more call-outs you get. There's no doubt that our busiest three months each year are usually June, July and August, where we, at least we hope that we're going to get good weather uh, and it's purely down to the number of people that come down to use the beach and use the sea for leisure the more people are here the more chance there is for something to go wrong and, and, and needing the iron line right so we're talking about inflatables that sort of thing inflatables are a, a, a big thorn in our side um, toy inflatables really they're not fit for purpose in terms of going to sea uh, and then it's other things like people uh, getting cut off on the rocks and cut off by the tide on the cliffs it's 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 what people do for pleasure but sometimes the, the sea can be a little bit hostile yeah so last weekend then was a particularly problematic weekend for you? It was. In fact, over the last six days, we've had six call-outs to various issues. Um, last Saturday, we had two call-outs to a jet ski and then to a small child in an inflatable tide off the South Gear. Sunday, we had people cut off by the tide. Monday, we had a boat broken down. So we, we, we've had a, a variety of call-outs, uh, and it's all down to the weather and, and people using the sea for pleasure. Yeah. So a varied week, and there's no such thing as a typical year. There's certainly no such thing as a typical year. Our busiest ever year was uh, about three years ago. We had something like 87 launches. So far this year we've had about 27, um, but a half, over half of those has been in the last six weeks. Yeah. Tell me about the vessel you've got then, which is uh, further down the, the seafront, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's about 300 yards away from here. We've got two lifeboats, actually. It's an Atlantic 85-class lifeboat, um, eight and a half metres long, capable of 35 knots, a very fast boat, very powerful boat, well equipped. And then we also have a small boat that we call an IV-1, an inshore lifeboat, which is ideal for the rocks and the cliffs. So depending on the job that we need to do, uh, we'll send one or both of those boats. Now, these vessels... Vessels are, are impressive, there's no doubt about it. Uh, how much do they cost? Well, the very latest lifeboat to enter the RNLI service was just yesterday, a Shannon-class lifeboat, and she was christened down at the RNLI headquarters at Poole, and she's £1.9 million. So where do you... do you still have to raise all the money yourself? Yes, the RNLI is a charity and all the crew are volunteers, and all that money comes from donations and legacies. Uh, it's, it's public money. The, the people of Britain own the RNLI. We don't own it. It's, it's, it's your money and, and everybody else's money that pays for it. Yeah. And what about the people, then, that, that do the rescuing? What sort of qualities do they need? Well, they're all volunteers, and, and more than anything, you have to have commitment and enthusiasm for the job. It's a 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's, it's not like joining a stamp club where you do it when you fancy it. Uh, you're on call 24 hours a day. It's a huge commitment that we ask of people, but the rewards are tremendous. How many people have you got then at the Red Car Station? We have about 25 volunteers, but not all are available at any one time because of work and holiday commitments, for example. So how does it work then? If somebody, if somebody needs rescuing now, wh where do people appear from to, to help? Well, it, it all starts with a message getting to the Coast Guard and, and they'll contact us uh, via a page or a bleeper. That summons the crew down to the station and they'll be at home, they'll be at work. And within about four minutes, you'll see the lifeboat ready to launch. It's a, it's a very quick response we provide and, and normally within about eight minutes, the boat is in the sea and, and starting the rescue. So how long have you been doing it, Dave? I've been doing it a long time. I've been doing this for 35 years now. Do you ever get scared? No, not scared. Sometimes... Uh, when Concerned? They... Con concerns a better word. Um, we trust the equipment, we get the best boats in the world, we get the best training in the world, and with all that put together, the, the risks are minimal. Um, but sometimes the guys come back and think, yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting job, but yeah. uh, normally they're safe and well. But in the winter, when it can be pretty rough out there? It can be rough, but the, there's bigger hazards. The cold is, is far worse than rough seas, and, and, and fog's all, always our nightmare, because you, you literally can't see where you're going. If you were to be in the North Sea, in January, February, how long could you survive in that water? Unprotected, probably no more than 30 minutes. And the winter time temperature is about 5 degrees. That's very, very cold. And even at this time of the year, it's only 10 or 11 degrees. It's very cold even now. But no call-outs 
so far today? Not today. Last one was at half past nine last night. All right, Dave, good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Dave Cox from the RNLI at Redcar, 12 minutes past 11.